What is going on people? Triple M back again with another video and tonight we've got to have a serious conversation about France because they are one game away from doing the rare back-to-back, -back, the rare double, the rare double, the rare retention of one of the most elusive trophies in world sport and that is the FIFA World Cup. Many a great players and many a great nation go lifetimes without getting their hands on this trophy and France who are the current holders of this trophy are about to retain it again if they can get past Messi and if they can get past Argentina. They are one step away from completing history and it's all in part thanks to this man, this youngster from Iron Track Frankfurt, Kolo Muane. He has absolutely burst onto the scene and created a very special memory. Of course, the man who did the work for the goal was Kylian Mbappe. He was twisting, turning, bobbing, weaving absolutely moving through a high traffic area filled with red shirts to the brim took a shot it deflected and it landed in the path of Kolo Moane and of course who could forget the efforts of Antoine Griezmann what a genuinely special player this man is I think when people think of Antoine Griezmann they think of his technical ability they think of what he is able to do with the ball at his feet but they don't talk about his hard work they don't talk about his application. They don't talk about the dog in him. The absolutely dirty, scoundrel attitude that he has. It's important to have players like that in your team. It's important to have players who are very physical. It's important to have players who run their socks off. It's important to have players who, even though they would have every right to just camp on the halfway line and wait for the ball at their feet, instead they go the extra mile. They defend from the front. They press. They relentlessly look for 50-50s in the middle of the park. You need players like that. You can't just have a team full of pretty technical footballers. You need players who also have the application. You need players who also have the mindset. You need players who are also down to get dirty when it matters most. And Anton Griezmann has shown that he isn't just a pretty footballer. And when I say pretty footballer, I'm not talking about aesthetics. I'm talking about in terms of being a technical footballer who's known for the flair, who's known for doing all the work on the ball rather than off the ball. Please don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Anyways, he's a fantastic footballer, Anton Griezmann. Very well-rounded footballer. And I think he is an unsung hero for France at this World Cup. Him, Rabio, Chouameni, that midfield three, sometimes a midfield four, has been excellent. It's been nothing short of magnificent. And even though Mbappe has had a fantastic World Cup, Giroud has had a fantastic World Cup, Dembele has showed up in moments here and there, I think that Antoine Griezmann has really put his hand up and said, hey, I can play football too. Remember when you guys said Pogba missing and Benzema missing was going to hinder us badly? Well, I have shown you guys that we don't need Pogba. We don't need Benzema. We can actually still play football. We can actually say, what's up? We're here to retain the World Cup. Not win the World Cup. Retain the World Cup. Retain the competition that's already ours. Yeah? We're not taking our hands off this beautiful trophy. We're not taking our hands off this elusive, majestic, fantastic, rare trophy that only comes around once every four years. We're not taking our hands off of it. Good luck. Good luck trying to take this off our hands because we ain't giving it up easily. There's only one man, only one man who stands in the way of France and completing the double. And that is Lionel Messi. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't know if he can do it. I predicted Argentina to win this World Cup and I still believe that they have everything it takes to win this World Cup. But because France are in the final... I don't know which way this one is going to swing because my assumption of Argentina winning the World Cup was on the premise that they were not going to be playing France in the final. It could have been anyone else. It could have been England. It could have been Morocco. Heck, it could have been Portugal. It could have even been Brazil. I don't even think it's possible that they could have played Brazil because I think Brazil was on the same side of the bracket as them. So I think they would have beat Brazil in the semi-final to make the final in some sort of alternate parallel universe where Brazil didn't get knocked out by Croatia. But obviously that's not the real world. The real world we live in is that France are in the World Cup and they will play Argentina in a few days. And honestly, folks, I don't know which way this one is going to this one's going to go. I am excited. I am enthralled. I am emotionally invested. And look, I haven't spoken about Morocco. I have not spoken about Morocco because on the one hand, I'm very upset that Morocco have gone out. On the one hand, I'm very upset that Morocco, despite playing well tonight, despite showing a lot of courage, despite showing a lot of bravado, despite running their socks off and leaving absolutely everything out on that field and taking the car home 
completely empty. There's nothing left in that tank because they left it all out on the field. Despite all of that, I'm still proud of Morocco. As an African, I'm still proud. I believe they're the first team in African history to make a World Cup semi-final. I mean, I'm sure that they are in my lifetime anyways, but I'm pretty sure they're the first team in the history of Africa to make a World Cup semi-final. That is a monumental achievement. They were one game away from creating history, from cementing themselves as the, the only African team to potentially win a World Cup. It wasn't meant to be, unfortunately, but I think a semi-final is good enough. Considering nobody with a straight face was being genuinely serious would have said that Morocco would have made a semi-final. Only a, maybe a deluded Moroccan fan. And I don't even think Morocco fans are that deluded. I think they were just happy to be along for the ride. But when they made that semi-final, you just believed. You just had to believe. After Portugal, after Spain, after finishing top of their group and beating Belgium, after drawing to Croatia, a team that is very difficult to play against, you just had to believe. You had to believe that anything was possible. Even against France, anything was possible. And we saw glimpses of it. We saw glimpses of it. We saw Morocco hit the post. We saw Morocco nearly, nearly equalize against France in the, in the 70th minute. It was this close, this close to being a completely different result. If they just had that extra quality in the final third, perhaps we'd be sitting here going, you know what? Morocco have done it again. But if buts and maybes don't count, and I guess my jinx piles are finally done because I actually jokingly predicted Morocco to lose and this time they finally did lose. So I'm pretty upset about that, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm also proud of them at the same time. Very weird feeling. Very weird feeling. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. It's been your boy Triple M. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. And subscribe to the channel, baby, because we've got one more World Cup video to do before we start making Premier League content again. And I am excited. I don't know who's going to win. Is it Messi? Is it Mbappe? Is it France? Is it Argentina? Is it Griezmann? Is it Enzo Fernandez? Is it Di Maria? Is it Dembele? Who is going to win the battle? Is it Oppo Meccano? Is it Lissandro Martinez? Is it Otamendi? Is it Rafael Varane? Who will win? Who will come out as MVP? Which country will lift the most prestigious trophy in footballing history? I can't wait.